Hey people, what's up? I'm Gunnar and today I'm super excited about presenting a brand new video series to you here on the Decodable YouTube channel. It's named Data Streaming Quick Tips. And in each episode, I will explain one common task or challenge in the space of stream processing to you. So we will talk about things like joining the data from multiple Kafka topics into a nested JSON structure, running time-windowed aggregations, establishing data contracts, and much, much more. We will talk about upstream open source technology like Apache Flink, Apache Kafka, Flink SQL, Debezium, all those kinds of things, as well as the decodable SaaS for stream processing. As the title says, this will be short and crisp episodes of let's say five to 10 minutes each. So without further ado, let's get started with the inaugural episode of Data Streaming Quick Tips. All right, so what I want to talk about today is the absolute Kafka connector for Apache Flink and in particular Flink SQL. And now you may have seen already in Flink that there is this absolute Kafka connector and also then a regular Kafka connector. And you might wonder how do they differ and when to use which one. And essentially, this absolute connector is able to consume changelog streams. So this means if you have a stream, as for instance, produced by the Flink CDC connectors based on the museum, which have insert events, update events, and delete events, well, then this connector would be able to interpret this stream and essentially apply those changes in an absolute fashion. So this means only the latest state per key will be emitted to a sync Kafka topic. So if you have an insert event coming in produced by Debezium, well then the current state of this insert will be propagated. If it's an update, the after state of this update event will be propagated. And if it's a delete event which is coming in, then a tombstone event will be emitted to Kafka, which then means it can be used for compaction and get rid of all the messages with the same key. And that's a bit different from the regular Kafka connector, which essentially emits events in append-only style uh, fashion without caring too much about uh, keys, really. To make things a bit more explicit, I've prepared an example with some source code. So let's take a look at that one. Okay, so in this example, I want to show you how you can use the Kafka absurd connector to emit events coming from Flink into um, a Kafka topic. And as the source uh, for this change log stream, I'm going to use the Flink CDC connector for Postgres, which in turn is based on the Debezium Postgres connector. So Postgres will be the source of our data. And I have a few things running via Docker Compose. I have Postgres as our source of data. Then I have Red Panda as a Kafka compatible um, data streaming platform. And then I have my Flink components, the job manager, the task manager, and a Flink SQL client. Here I have a shell for Postgres, so I just kind of take a look at the source of my data. So I have a shipments table and there's a few records with shipments in it. I also have a Flink SQL shell, so I can run SQL statements against Flink. And finally, let me take a look into Red Panda. So there's two topics at this point, um, which I'm going to use later on. Now, in order to ingest changes into Flink, I need to set up an instance of the Flink CDC connector. And I do this by defining a table using this create table statement. I define the schema of my data. So I'm defining uh, which columns there are, like shipment ID, order ID, and so on. And just for the fun of it, I also add two what's called virtual columns for the database name and for the timestamp of the change event. So they are added uh, on top to the actual columns to the schema of this table and their, their contents are extracted from the change events which are coming in. I specify the shipment I should be the primary key and this is very important because this should then later be on the basis for our absurd semantics. Then within the with clause, I specify the kind of the connector, the host name, port, username, and so on. So let me submit the statement to set up this connector. All right, so with the connector and the table being set up, we can take a look at the data within Flink. So let me run the statements, like start from shipments, and I see exactly the contents of my shipment table as it is in Postgres. Now, if I do another insert in Postgres and I issue this statement, then I will see how this uh, query result in Flink gets updated. So another insert event gets added. Similarly, if I do an update, in that case, I actually see two events there. So one update event, which represents the old state of the row and another update event, which represents the new state of this row. And finally, if I do a delete, then I also will get a delete event within Flink. 
Now with the connector and the table being set up, it's time to propagate this changelog stream from Flink into Red Panda. And for that, I'm going to set up another uh, connector using the create table statement, I'm specifying the same schema as before. Um, there's my actual schema, there's those two virtual columns and my primary key. I'm saying it should be an instance of the absolute Kafka connector. I want to send my data to the shipments topic on this Rependa cluster there, and I want to use JSON as the format for my keys and my values. The next step then is to actually connect those two tables to each other. And for that, I'm using the insert statement. And essentially, I'm just selecting everything from my shipments table, and I insert it into this shipments output absurd table. I submit the statement. Now, this actually deploys a Flink job on our cluster, which then will be continuously running. So now we can take a look into Red Panda. We can actually consume from this shipments topic. And for the sake of the example, for making it easier, I'm piping the output to JQ. And I see now the latest state per row in this topic there. So if I insert another t uh, row in my database table, Right after that, I see the, in this event showing up also on, on my Rependa topic. If I do an update, well, then I will see the latest state for that particular row in uh, Rependa. So it's applying those absolute semantics, just the current state of my row. And similarly, if I do uh, a delete, well, then it actually will emit a tombstone event, which means then that uh, Red Panda or Kafka, if this was our program, could um, get rid of this uh, record uh, if it, this was a compacted topic. Okay, now let's see what happens if we were to use the Kafka connector for consuming this change log stream. So to try this out, I'm creating another table, again, using the same schema as before, but now I'm using the Kafka connector. And again, I'm using just value, the value format of JSON. And now let's see what happens. So I can create this table, so this uh, works just fine. But now if I try to run this insert, I want to propagate all the contents of my shipments table into this um, uh, output table, which I just created. This actually fails because this Kafka connector doesn't know how to handle those update and delete events, which it receives from the change log stream. Finally, I want to show you how you actually can use the Kafka connector by emitting um, actual DB some change events. So for that, let's just uh, drop this table, which we just created, and let's create another table. And now again, I'm using, I'm going to use the Kafka connector, but Instead of JSON, I'm using Debezium JSON as the uh, format which should be used here. So this is actually natively supported by this Kafka connector and by Flink CDC in general. And this means now we can actually emit and propagate um, events in the Debezium change event format. So this table gets created. We can run this insert again for taking the data from our source table into this output table. And now we can take a look into our uh, topic in Red Panda. And again, I'm going to pipe the output to JQ. And I'm using this JQ from JSON function for propagating just the content of the value part from the change events. So to um, you know have this nicely highlighted on the CLI here. So here I see now those uh, change event formats and uh, change events, and they look like the Bezium change events. And if we do another insert, we will see this uh, insert. A create style event is coming through, but also actually it's not really the Beesum events, they are synthetic events and this becomes obvious if you do an update because now instead of an update event which has the old and the new state of a row, you actually get two events. You get one delete event which has the old state of the row and you get a create event which has the new state of the row. And that's it, the very first episode of the Data Streaming Quick Tips series here on the Decodable YouTube channel. If you want to play around with the Flink Kafka connector or the Flink Kafka Absolute connector yourself, then I would very much recommend you to check out the examples repository of the Decodable CO organization on GitHub, where we have the complete source code of the example which I showed you today for you to explore by yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please give us your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, in particular if you never want to miss any future episode of this series. And also if there is anything in particular which you want to learn about, please let me know. Either put a comment below or hit me up on Twitter where you can find me as at Gunnar Molling. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy streaming!